Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see uh, some familiar faces here. It's been a while since we've been together, so appreciate you taking the morning to be here with us today. And thank you for those who are here for both testifying and just to be here today. I uh, appreciate uh, you coming out and spending time with us this morning. Uh, first thing I would like to do before we get into it, uh, I'd like the, the senators to introduce themselves uh, so that uh, the, the folks in the audience and those watching have an opportunity to, to know who is here today. So uh, if we would, uh, Senator Murphy, would you please uh, begin? And we are kind of in that fun fall time when we've got all the festivals, we got all the events going on in our district. So if you could kind of introduce yourself, tell me where you're from, and then uh, if you've got an event or a, a fall thing that you like to do in your district, uh, why don't you say that now? <laughs> uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members, uh, and thank you very much for uh, inviting us to Lakeville. I'm glad to see former colleagues, uh, Mary Liz Holberg, Ross Peterson. It's great to see you. I'm Erin Murphy. I'm a new member of the Minnesota Senate. I represent a district in St. Paul, District 64, which is the westernmost part of St. Paul, and it abuts the river. So this time of the year, like most people in Minnesota, I really love the fall. And we will soon see the change of the leaves and along the river basin it is absolutely beautiful. So I'll be spending some time in Hidden Falls Park on my way to Crosby Park. Um, there's a great walking path along there, and I'll be doing that in the district I represent. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. I'm State uh, Senator Mary Kunish. I am a first year sen senator as well after having spent four years in the House. I represent District 41, which is um, the communities of St. Anthony Village, New Brighton, Columbia Heights and Hilltop, Fridley, and a little bit of Spring Lake Park. And uh, of course, this time of year, uh, we're kind of between that chilly in the evening and nice and warm during the day. And so I will be spending a lot of my time, much like uh, Senator um, Murphy, getting out into uh, our local parks. I live right across from this great Three Rivers um, Silverwood Park. And they always have great things going on there. Um, not far from the Mississippi River, not far from a lot of great places, um, including many Oktoberfests. So we'll be uh, out and about enjoying the, the, the community as well as our nature. Thank you. Hi there, uh, State Senator Jason Isaacson. I uh, represent the Shoreview area, uh, Vadness Heights, Arden Hills, Mounds View, Gem Lake, Roseville, Little Canada. Hope I didn't miss any. Um, this is my second term in the Senate. I did two terms in the House, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really glad to be down in Lakeville. It's good to, to see folks in the community in the area. Uh, we don't have a ton of fall stuff. Most of our stuff happens in summer, but we are big Halloween people in my district. So there's a huge uh, festival at my church we do uh, where you can trick your trunk, and everybody sets up scary little situations around their car, and you know, and you give kids come by and they parade. It's a real fun family event. Senator? Hello there. I am Senator Mary Kiffmeyer. Glad to be with you today. Good to see Lakeville uh, coming south of the cities. My district is Senate District 30, which is the eastern part of Sherburn and Wright County and includes the cities of Big Lake, St. Michael, uh, Elk River, Otsego, Albertville, Hanover, and 14 homes in Dayton. And any season is a good season in my district. <laughs> uh, fall colors are absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we have the Outlet Mall, so if you want to drive and see the fall colors, come to my district and go to the Outlet Mall. It's really, really fun. So thank you for having us today and looking forward to hearing your testimony. Thank you. Now, if you want to see fall colors, come to my district. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, uh, I'm Tom Bach. I'm a member of the state senate. I represent a large piece of northeastern Minnesota, uh, a small part of Duluth, all of the North Shore, along the Canadian border uh, to west of International Falls. So if you think of a map of the state, it's the point. So I tell people sometimes for fun, without my district, Minnesota would have no point. Uh, but uh, for fun, uh, I say those of us that live up there, we go north to play, south to Christmas shop. <laughs> so next week, I'm hoping, of, providing I can get a COVID test, I'm hoping to go to my cabin in Ontario. So. 
But pleasure, pleasure to be here. I love all the new infrastructure because I've been looking at old stuff because I'm the bonding chair. <laughs> uh, Senator John Jasinski from Faribault, uh, Faribault Town of Wasika. I'm just south, actually. Rich Drayheim kind of shoots through, but basically I'm just south of this district here. Uh, I'm new on the redistricting committee. It's my first meeting. I'm replacing Senator Jeremy Miller, who uh, is now as the majority leader, uh, stepped off this committee, so I'm filling that position. I've uh, been in the Senate for five years. I'm the chair of local gov and the vice chair of transportation. Uh, I was previous the mayor of Faribault prior to coming into the Senate, uh, so it's nice to have you here, Mayor. And I know Roz well from the, my real estate background. Roz and I have done a couple deals together over, over time. So uh, I was up with Tom in, in his country, in God's country up there this last week on the bonding tour, so it's nice to have him down here uh, near my district. Uh, uh, this time of the year, it's looking, trying to get docks out, and with uh, low water levels, it's going to be a little difficult this year to get our pontoons off our list before we get those out, so we'll be working on that. And then we also have the fall festival this Saturday in Faribault with a chili cook-off as well, uh, so it's a good event in downtown Faribault. So uh, great, great to be on the committee and look forward to the redistricting and uh, what's coming up here in 2022. So, so Senator, do you have it? chili recipe that you're saving for Saturday? I was the first place winner in 2016 when I ran for wow. the Senate, so I just want to make sure you know that, and uh, if you want the recipe, uh, you're going to have to fight over it. <laughs> so I think, uh, Andrew, if, uh, Mr. Erickson, if you're, do you want to introduce yourself quick? And I'm Senator Mark Johnson. I come from Northwest Minnesota. Uh, if, if Senator Bach has a joke, I've got one too. I'm the number one district in the state as rated by district. So it's a, it's a great place to be from. Uh, we just got done with one of our big events up there, the Goose Fest, which was Explore Minnesota's event of the year here a couple of years ago. Uh, we got that going on. And then we've got the big sugar beet campaign, which everybody gets excited for here coming up in the next week or so starting. So. Uh, some small things, but a uh, great place to be. Uh, so a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, uh, members, your microphones are hot. So after testifiers and whatnot, um, just remember, keep your cheers down because the microphones are hot. Uh, the other thing that I'd really like to do is, is thank uh, the city of Lakeville. Uh, Mayor Doug, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, and also Tim and, and uh, Justin for setting up all the IT. I really appreciate that. That makes our jobs a lot easier to come to a community like this who really open, opens up their arms and doors and lets us come in and, and do this here. So the purpose of today's meeting is not an effort to come here and tell you where the district lines are gonna be and here's what we wanna see, but an opportunity for us to learn about what makes Lakeville and this region uh, important and where we need to be looking for those particular interests and lines uh, through the district uh, to really to, to meet your needs as a community. And so uh, we do that by coming down. Uh, we don't take Zoom testimony because we want to hear from the folks here in, in this community, and, and that's our effort. So we've got a, a good collection of individuals willing to testify, so thank you for taking time uh, to do that today uh, to be here. <coughs> Paul, am I missing anything? Okay. With those... Uh, items out of the way, um, we can start with testimony. Um, if we could, uh, Ms. Peterson, would you like to begin? Thank you. It's a real honor to be here and I really appreciate all of you being here today and coming down to the south side and checking out Lakeville. We really do appreciate you taking the time. Um, as and thank you chair for allowing me to speak and staff for all of you do what you do as well so my name is Roz Peterson as mentioned and I'm a former member of the house and served on the local government and policy um, committee so thank you on listening to my my testimony today and I appreciate uh, hearing my viewpoints so I represented the communities of Burnsville and Lakeville. However, I grew up in Minnetonka and went to Wayzata High School, which is located in Plymouth. So needless to say, my perspective is from the suburban standpoint. And as you uh, introduced which districts or which communities you represented, I think that you can relate to some of the points that I'm gonna be bring up now. 
I'm also a commercial realtor who focuses mostly on the South Metro, but work on properties in Hopkins and Bloomington as well. Uh, for example, Burnsville has 61,000 people. Lakeville has nearly 70,000 people. In the current house district where I live, Burnsville was represented by people who did not live in Burnsville 60% of the time. In fact, there were many years there were no house members that lived in Burnsville, yet Burnsville was represented by three house districts. I think this is wrong. I believe a better solution is to keep house districts within the same city as much as possible in the suburbs. So for example, or, or you could follow other government lines like school districts or something like that. Um, recognizing that it's not that simple, the next line should follow major roads. A major or even minor collector road would be preferred over a low traffic city street. My current house district divides neighborhoods down a city street that is not contiguous with another neighborhood, and it simply makes no sense. In summary, please consider adding to the process of determining house district lines in suburban areas is one, they follow city borders first. Two, they follow school district boundaries. Third, they follow major collector roads. And fourth, if possible, the portion of an adjacent, largely developed city should be at least 10,000 people or more to hinder what I think is gerrymandering. This process should be followed in the metro only, and it really doesn't pertain to greater Minnesota, which is clearly much larger areas and, and typically includes full counties. Our community communications, whether it's the local newspaper or online media presence, is broken down by cities or schools. So it tends to be a better way to stay informed as a member, as well as provide a more efficient way to communicate with constituents. I believe that the legislature is the best place to make these decisions and not the court system. After all, who knows better than you? The House members or the Senate members who are closest to the people. I believe that by working together, you can find consensus and know that you will find the best solutions if there is a willingness to get along. I challenge you to find this trust and peace in each other. I suggest these processes only to better represent the people of Minnesota and respectfully hope you consider these recommendations. Thank you for your time and service to our state. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Ms. Shanagan. Okay, so is this gonna be okay? Yeah, right. please state your name for the record uh, and begin. Dory Shanagan, and I live in Bloomington and I live in CD3. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, I am addressing the issues with the congressional districts today. I'm not going down to um, the lower level. Uh, I would have uh, attended a hearing uh, closer to my home, but this is, you know, as you know, there's only been two Senate hearings. Mm -hmm. So um, I am representing myself as an individual. I do not represent any party or organization. And of course, I want to talk about fair redistricting for the Minnesota voters. Uh, I just wanted to say that I um, I'm a Wisconsinite by birth and education, and I moved to Minnesota a couple years ago uh, from New Mexico. And just an interesting point, I worked for a state senator in New Mexico, and I worked on state commi Senate committees. So I'm, I'm sort of familiar with the process, although it's always nerve-wracking to testify. But um, I understand, the reason I mention that is I understand the importance of the, the public having uh, input to the legislators about bills, but also especially uh, re redistricting this year. Very important. So like I said, I'm just gonna talk about the congressional districts. I'm not going to a lower level than that. And I live in CD3, so that's what affects me the most. Uh, I believe that in the principle of uh, a district being contiguous, that the city of Edina as a whole should be pulled into CD3. 
Uh, it's not only about the issue of contiguous, but also as we've, uh, as I've seen in the principles listed in the, on the Senate um, committee website, it's also about uh, keeping a city whole in redistricting, if possible. So from my perspective, as a resident of Bloomington, um, I see a natural flow between the two cities of Bloomington and Dina. My neighbors and I all you know, do our shopping in those two cities, basically uh, recreational restaurants, et cetera. We do all of that. And I wanted to, um, to mention that I know that there have been other testimonies, at least in the House, uh, suggesting that uh, we pull CD3 down into this area. And I'm against that because I'm looking at the current map of CD3, as you well know, goes into from Bloomington, all of Bloomington, which is great. It doesn't split Bloomington up into the western uh, suburbs. And so adding a Dyna in, in its entirety makes a lot of sense. It, it is contiguous to the rest of the district. Right now, a Dyna is in two CDs, CD3 and CD5. So a Dyna people have told me, you know, if I have a question, I got to figure out which, you know, who am I talking to? So that's an issue, which congressperson you're talking to. So, um, like I said, I'm not a, a big fan of the idea of, of pulling CD3 down into, into this area. Uh, my, my neighbors and I do not come 10 miles down to go shopping when we can go right over to, you know, some part of Bloomington or Edina. Uh, also, it's the issue of pulling down into another county, down into Dakota County, when the majority, it's my understanding, the majority of CD3 is in Hennepin County. So again, there's that thing of keeping things together. So basically, that's my comment about um, the district. And then I just had um, some, a, que a question about process or a comment about process. Although I will say one other thing about when I'm saying that a Dyna should be pulled as an entirety into CD3, this is not a major change to the uh, congressional district. It's not a lot of change, and yet it's sort of logical. And so, I mean, I've heard people say, you know, I don't want my district to change drastically, maybe even what the previous speaker said, so that things are all split up and I don't know what's going on, you know, gerrymandered. And so being, again, I'm repeating myself, but pulling down into to another county, I don't think it is a good idea. The other thing, I'm gonna go back to my background and say that uh, I believe so far, at least, at least looking at the list, I think I'm the only individual resident as opposed to somebody who's uh, served as, as an elected official. And you know, elected officials, my exposure having worked for a state senator, elected officials have their vested interests, but I'm just talking as an individual and I think that's important. And I'm talking, you know, having talked to my neighbors, similar, similar comments. So that is, those are my comments about the congressional district. The other request I would have is that the process for redistricting be as open to the public as possible. And so, so far with my experience, and I don't mean to be critical, but uh, there should be uh, agenda hearings for hearings well ahead of time. There should be materials on the, I'm just giving examples. On the website, they're easy, easily accessible. Uh, there should be more hearings. There's only two hearings that the Senate is holding. Uh, and there wasn't anyone close to my, uh, to, to where I live. I mean, I had to come down here. Uh, and also, the other request I would make is after the Senate draws its maps, that there be a hearing so that the public can <coughs> make their comments again. So important for us to make our comments before you all draw your maps, but also afterwards. So um, there's only one other comment I had, and that is that this is general principle, is that I live in the, the metro Twin Cities area. I consider it a very diverse area. I really like that. One of the reasons I moved to, to the Minneapolis area as opposed to somewhere else. I like it better than Wisconsin, by the way. <laughs> so it's wonderful. So anyway, um, it, and so I think that diversity is important in the metro area, which is, you know, CD3 is in the metro area, so minorities should be well represented in, in, the, in fair redistricting. So I give my, my, my personal situation as an example. I live in an apartment complex in 
Bloomington, and in that apartment complex, we have Anglos like myself, we have Hispanics, African Americans, uh, Asians, we have people who, uh, working people and retired people, and all ages. So my point in that is, I, I think that is a sort of a hallmark of the metro area, and I think that's a good thing. So we keep that in mind. I don't have any specific suggestion regarding that, but I think you should keep that in mind when you're drawing your maps. So anyway, uh, I want to thank the committee for listening, and uh, I hope you'll incorporate some of my suggestions. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I assume you don't have any questions. So. Appreciate it. Any questions, members? All right. Next on the list is Mayor Anderson. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Could you state your name uh, for the record and begin your testimony? I am Doug Anderson. I have the privilege to serve as the Lakeville Mayor. Um, I'm in my uh, ninth year on the Lakeville City Council, fifth year as mayor. So I have a fair amount of experience in our city. My wife and I moved here to Lakeville in 1983. She grew up here. Uh, her family moved here in 1963. Um, and so we have a lot of history in our city uh, and we've changed a lot uh, over a period of time. Um, honorable senators, I do appreciate the opportunity to address you this morning and to provide some of my thoughts in terms of redistricting, um, I'd just like to start off a with a little bit about who Lakeville is. And I know you have the data from the census, um, but let me just add my own kind of personal flavor to that. Um, the 2020 census, as uh, Roz Peterson just mentioned, 69,490 people. Um, just to point a context back in the 1970 census, we were 7,000 people. And that's about the time we were incorporated as a city. Um, so we've grown fairly quickly. In fact, over the last 10 years, the last decade, 2010 census to 2020 census, we grew 24%. Interestingly enough, um, that equates to 13,536 people. That's the most, most actual uh, kind of raw population growth in the state other than Minneapolis and St. Paul in terms of our growth. 24% uh, sounds like a lot, but in, if you go back the last decades back to 1970, our 24% growth rate uh, this last decade is the lowest it's ever been since 1970. In the decade of 1970, we grew 106% from 1970 to 1980. Now, obviously, the base is a lot smaller because we started at 7,000 people. Um, I couldn't agree more that, that I think our, our uh, diversity is changing in the context of our cities, and it certainly is here in Lakeville, and it's very exciting. Um, our census information from a year ago uh, indicates that our people of color population is 21.2% of our city, and that's, that's fairly diverse within itself. Um, that's almost doubled over the last decade. Um, and so we continue to be a city that's representative and a place that people choose to live um, with various cultural backgrounds. And finally, if you look at the census information in 2020, it shows that we're the 11th largest city in the state. Um, if you do, the, the staff has kind of done some math on housing starts and making appropriate assumptions. And today, as I stand here, we're probably the ninth largest city in the state based on our continued growth. And um, chatted briefly with Senator Bach as he wa walked in and your comment about you know, how new we are. Um, we also do have some old stuff here. Um, and so as you, uh, as senators and participate with your bonding bills, um, I know we have a freeway interstate uh, interchange that's in dire need and has been undersized for many, many years. So um, thank you for the support you've already given us um, in the context of doing some preliminary work on that, and we look forward to getting that taken care of fairly soon, hopefully, over the next couple of years. So that's a little bit about who we are as the city of Lakeville and a little bit about who I am. Um, so I just have a few comments in terms of redistricting. Um, the first is just kind of some fundamental things as, as I look at our city. Um, I think it's really helpful from a, uh, city standpoint to reduce the number of types of ballots we have across the city. So the more we can have consistency across the city um, for our for our residents to to be able to talk to their neighbors and 
and communicate and understand what the election issues are. Um, to have a less, less variance in our ballots is important. Um, I think it's also, and I just want to reinforce how important it is not to cross county boundaries. Um, and I suspect Commissioner Holberg is going to make this same statement and just want to reinforce that. I know that's been a, a priority in the past, and I do hope that we can continue to, to um, uh, fulfill that priority to not cross county boundaries. Um, and ultimately, it comes down to, for us as a city ballot administration, um, and just keeping things as concise and simple as possible. And I think that's probably true for, for any city, and it probably fits into Roz Peterson's proposal as far as trying to keep cities uh, together within one Senate district. It just helps us administer things, and um, also, as I said, I think our, our constituencies appreciate simplicity and being able to talk to their neighbors about what the election issues are. So finally, I'll just add kind of my own personal view um, in the context of life here in Lakeville and, and how I've been involved politically over the years and related with legislators. Um, I really do believe that it is important to keep a city as unified as possible in one Senate district. Um, I know there's various opinions here in terms of how this can play out and, and sometimes it's helpful to have more than one legislator, but my own personal experience has been that if there's a small part of Lakeville that is represented by another, by a legislator who has a majority of their district in another community, um, we tend not to get a fair shake. And so I, I think that unifying our city as part of one um, Senate district makes sense. Secondly, due to our core population, or excuse me, central city population growth in Minneapolis and St. Paul, it seems to me that there's going to need to be some Senate district changes that, that are going to accommodate that growth population in the, in the core city. Um, so in my mind's eye, um, we have small parts of Lakeville that are part of Senate District 56 and 57. One is the district that Roz Peterson spoke about earlier that... Um, they can move north. And so in essence, it lets Lakeville become part of our own Senate district. And so I hope that you would consider that as you look at the district boundaries. Um, and finally, Lakeville is not large enough to be its Senate district itself. We're about 70,000 people. I think your ideal number, if I'm not mistaken, is about 85,000. Um, and so we would need to add population. And my uh, personal thought is to add population to the south down, down toward the southern boundary of uh, Dakota County, which would pick up a little bit of the north side of Northfield and then go as far east as you need to go to uh, build the population up to that $85,000 number. Um, I intentionally excluded Farmington um, because Farmington is a, over 20,000 people, I believe, so it would put us, if we combine Lakeville and Farmington, it would be too large. And I think that Farmington uh, could easily fit into Apple Valley and Rosemont and other areas as far as the Senate District that, again, would help move things to the north to accommodate uh, the central city growth in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So those are my thoughts and ideas, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, and I hope you uh, uh, consider my thoughts. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. any, any questions, questions now? Yes, we can. Sarah Kunish. Thank you for your testimony and explaining um, this incredible growth. What a, what a great um, issue to have. So as you're reimagining -im your, um, your district and how it would be best served for the Lakeville um, communities, have you had these discussions with other community leaders, other mayors in your area, have you guys, have you, you know, sat down together and said, wow, if I could draw the map, this is how I would, <laughs> this is how it would work for all of us so that there aren't these little bits and pieces, you know, fragmented out? Mm -hmm. Have those conversations we, been going I, on? I all? have not been involved in okay. any of those conversations, but I'd, happy, I'd be happy to initiate that. Yeah, and that'd be curious. provide some information. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Senator Murphy. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really appreciate your testimony, and I love hearing the story of incorporating 7,000 people, so a small city, 
to becoming a, a suburban community and the ninth, maybe the ninth largest city in the state. Um, I think that's a, an interesting and pretty amazing trajectory. You um, are sharing with us you know, a number of what you hope will best represent um, the future of Lakeville when we think about this map and you talk about going south. When you think about containing Lakeville in a district and wanting to make sure the population is right and taking it south, do you think we should apply the same rules to Northfield? So not bringing part of Northfield into this district. Do you think we should hold those communities separate from one another? Yeah, Northfield's a tough uh, situation because it spans two counties. And so, you know, I, I, my own personal sense is I would kind of hold firm with the county um, boundary, and unfortunately that does split Northfield. So, I mean, I know that there's areas where there's gonna be little challenges like that, um, but that would, be, that would be my own personal sense. Because um, I think from a ballot administration standpoint, it, it's helpful to stay within the county. Um, you know, I know uh, uh, Mayor Pownell in Northfield fairly well. I, I'm not here representing her at all. I don't know what her opinion would be, and I just want to say that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Any further thank questions? Again, thank you so much for coming to Lakeville, and, yeah. and uh, please have take an opportunity as you leave to look around town, go down and see historic downtown Lakeville, and if you have an opportunity to have lunch, please uh, stop into one of our local restaurants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Mayor. You. <clears throat> Commissioner Holberg. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the committee. First of all, thank you for choosing Lakeville. We're always glad uh, to host legislators. I'd be remiss if I didn't at least recognize that this is Senator Duckworth's district and he's not here because he's serving the state and the country and the National Guard. Um, but we're grateful for his service, yours as well. Nobody could have predicted what the last 18 months were gonna put on your plates. As a former member, I have empathy, sympathy, awe, and be really glad that I was no longer uh, in St. Paul. Uh, we had our hands full at the county level, but thank you for, I, I know how much time, effort, anguish, um, impossible to know whether you're doing things right with so many unknowns and the uncertainty of are we doing the right thing or not you know of course layered on top of everybody has their own ideas um, a nearly impossible situation so thank you to all of you you're, you're surviving you're all looking healthy and well so that's remarkable uh, first of all I'll just start by saying the earlier this is resolved the better uh, for everybody. Um, it's my understanding that Dakota County finalized their commissioner districts 10 years ago, a week before filings opened, given that they're last to go after all of the cities set their precincts. The other thing I have to preface my remarks with is these are only my remarks. I'm not speaking on behalf of the Dakota County Board of Commissioners. We've taken no positions relative to redistricting at all. So a little history. Um, given the growth in Lakeville, each redistricting has been uh, a major change. The mayor kind of outlined the percentage of growth um, in each decade and each decade uh, had its unique challenges. Believe it or not, in 1978, former speaker Steve Svigum door knocked my parents' home. So <laughs> he lived in Kenyon. My parents are in Lakeville, actually west of here. So imagine that district in the 70s. Little did I know that 20 years later, I would be serving with him in the Minnesota House of Representatives. That year, Lakeville had three precincts, one which was House District 25A, and the other House District 53B. So just the numbering sequence can give you some flavor of how pulled apart Lakeville was in that uh, districting. So Representative Swiggum's district included much of Southern Dakota County and half of Goodhue County. He prevailed over Jim White and won with 62% of the vote. 53A was won by Chuck Hallberg 
with 57% of the vote over Bob Jensen. 53A included two precincts in Lakeville, parts of Apple Valley, Burnsville, and Farmington. Now, how did that happen with Sigma, you know, out to the east and Farmington being in Hallberg's district with a, a number of going from 25 to 53? Okay, so fast forward 20 years and most of Lakeville was in one Senate district, but had the distinction of having a House district that was divided into three congressional districts. That was my House district. One precinct was in Ramstead's district, and then it was divided between, I believe it was Mingi and Luther, but don't quote me on that. That House district included all but one precinct of Lakeville, again, these weird little slivers that make no sense in a different district. And um, sen I had a lot big share of what is now Senator Pratt's district in that I had most of Lakeville, half of Farmington, most of Southern Scott County, including Elko Newmarket and the townships of Spring Lake Park, Newmarket and Credit River and Cedar Lake townships. In my early years as a legislator, I proposed a bill that would make the number of Senate districts a factor of the congressional districts, proposing either 63 or 64 Senate seats that would accommodate the symmetry of each congressional district, providing the boundaries for an equal number of Senate districts. Obviously, I failed in that effort. Would have made sense though, right? <laughs> Um, the 2000 map included a unique element when the boundary between the A and B sides of the Senate district followed a major road and then for some reason dipped south down the middle of a cul-de-sac and through the side yards of two homes and back up to what was previously a county road, leaving six or seven homes in my district and Representative Garofalo representing the homes on the other side of this little cul-de-sac. Nobody could quite explain that. So in 2010, when Lakeville was divided into three Senate districts, none of the boundaries reflected naturally occurring boundaries. The city of Lakeville actually is very unique in that we have three different school districts and three different zip codes. Now, yeah, any of those boundaries could have been used to divide up uh, the city of Lakeville and um, the fact that the house districts could have been reshuffled to make it two Senate districts to, instead of three was not done either. And so here we sit in three different Senate districts. So considering the 24% growth of the city, we understand that the next map, again, will contain many changes. And I would urge the committee to review the opportunities to follow boundaries like school districts, zip codes, even you could look at um, school boundaries. I don't know the superintendents here, whether we have nine schools, nine elementary, nine elementary schools, three junior highs, and two high schools that also provide boundaries. Actually, a fun fact, you'll enjoy this, Senator Bach. Before school district consolidations in the ancient days when I went to school, District 194 had the largest land area of any school district in the whole state. So that still stands. <laughs> um, it would also be helpful if draft maps were released to allow for comment and review of minor adjustments, such as the split cul-de-sac. And even if the judiciary is tasked with drawing the lines, their willingness to make minor adjustments could solve a lot of headaches for those who participate and administer the elections for our cities, counties, and states. And uh, I know one year there was a boundary that literally went down the middle of an apartment building and split an apartment. And the decision was made that where the bedroom was, where the individuals sleep, would be the district that they live in. And those little minor tweaks could be resolved. Um, I mean, it could, you could manage expectations and that there wouldn't be room for major revisions, but if there were some of these minor 
tweaks that make sense. I think that would help as well. So, so thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Appreciate it. It's always good to have visitors in Lakeville. Thank you. It's good to be here. Appreciate you coming out. Members, any questions? All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. At this point, we'll open it up to the public. Uh, if anybody is wanting to come up and test, uh, testify, please do, do so now. Guys. Good morning. Good morning, Senators. Uh, I will limit my comments just to a simple welcome. It's great to see you here in my district uh, of Lakeville. Spent a couple last previous days uh, with uh, Senator Bach on a couple tours and a couple of other, others of you on uh, recent other tours. But just want to thank you because I know also as a member uh, doing the road shows uh, it gets to be a little bit of, uh, taxing and, and tiresome, but it does mean a lot to have you here in the district, especially for this particular topic uh, to understand. Um, what, before we be, I'm continue sorry, here, we want to make sure that we know who's welcoming us here for the record. I know that your body <laughs> does things a little bit different, but we need a name here. So. I'm sorry, Senator Johnson. Yes, my name is uh, John Kosnick. I'm the state representative here Thank in you. Lakeville. Um, but uh, as I was saying, I, I just appreciate your, the efforts uh, that you make and the time that you put in uh, to do these uh, hearings. It's important to our community that you are here. And um, I, I think the mayor said he was buying lunch downtown. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Representative. Any further comments? All right. This, oh. Mr. Chair, I know it's, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have a question for the mayor. I, I thought of it, but I wasn't quick enough. If he wouldn't Certainly. mind. Would you be willing to come? Certainly. Thank you. Senator Kipmeyer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. So, Mayor, when you talked about the diversity of Lakeville, are they pretty well spread out through your city, or do they tend to be grouped in one particular quadrant or something? I, Mayor? I mean, my own personal sense, it's pretty spread out. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we get data from the census that gives us factual information about. Okay. Uh, the cultural diversity and certain where people actually live. But I, uh, my own sense as I've door knocked and mm -hmm. you know that I think that people are pretty spread out across the city. Okay. You know, we have, we have a fair amount of diversity across our city from a housing standpoint. I don't know how much of this you know, but our, our uh, leadership of the city way before I was elected on city council made a choice with our comprehensive plan to do scattered site multifamily housing development. So we don't have like just one pocket where there's multifamily housing. It's scattered across the community. So our housing diversity, including manufactured home parks, we have four manufactured home parks in the city that again are scattered across the city and, not, and they've been here a long time. They're fairly mature, large trees, uh, real home-like settings. Um, and so everything's pretty well diverse across the community. Great question. Follow up? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And so, Mayor, I really appreciate that. I, I know the data and all that, but I know that when you're mayor, you get a pretty good sense, especially given office and city council and such for a while. So I think it's valuable to hear that. I don't think that's unusual uh, that we have, but I also want to, when you talk about the uh, diversity of the housing things, I would say that zoning and planning and what you do in regards to that is a thing that 20 years in the future, they are either curse you or bless you because of all the things that you can do in mayor and city council is having that orderly thing happening and having those mixes and, and interspersed with each other. So mm -hmm. you don't have that kind of isolation of one particular thing. So that's really good to hear that, but also to hear that folks are spread throughout. And I think that's part of uh, the housing issue as well, that kind of helps to contribute to that. So that's, that's a really good sign of, as you mentioned, folks who came before you did some really good work, yeah. and that's yeah. good to hear. And I think it also just helps to, um, it's kind of the richness of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as we grow up together, and this community, as, as we all know, has changed a lot, and so it's been wonderful, and it's been a real blessing what the earlier folks in leadership had done in terms of zoning and comprehensive planning, et cetera, because we're living in that now, and we hope to continue that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. 
Thanks. Thanks. Not really. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Senator Isaacson. Yeah, I just have a couple of uh, housekeeping questions for you, Mr. Chair. Uh, are we saying this is the, is this the last meeting or are we doing some more? We are, uh, Senator Isaacson, we are going to be doing some more. We were trying to plan this around uh, a special session as that's been kind of elusive. Right. right. Um, it's been tough to plan, but we want to make sure that we get uh, a few more in uh, before the before we wrap up. Um, we're hoping the next one will be uh, in uh, St. Paul within before uh, November, sometime uh, within October. Here, I'm hoping to okay. have another one down, but give you enough notice to get uh, you set up for that. Uh, we were just discussing that this morning on timing and things, uh, trying to get that lined up. But and we'll have at least that, and then I, I'm hoping <laughs> for, uh, for more afterwards. But so that there, to be determined. Is there a, a sketched out plan in terms of like how many we intend up having? Like when you're done, how many do you hope you've had? <coughs> yeah, we, we do have uh, a couple ideas. We wanna make sure that we're getting those areas that, that uh, we've seen a lot of changes mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. um, and then we've, go down the list of the districts that have had a lot of changes. So sure. we're just trying to pick out areas where uh, it would be important for us to go and, and learn a little bit more about those communities. And Mr. Chair, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna assume that at some point there'll be a map drawn, right? I mean, I think that's kind of what we're ending, ending towards. Is there a game plan or kind of a sketched out plan of how that will work uh, in terms of getting a map that you would submit forward to the Senate for approval? Sure. Yeah, and we want to make sure that we take in all the information before we put together any sort of map so that any of those preconceived notions and whatnot, we want to make sure we get these tests, these ideas in first. Uh, so hopefully uh, sometime in early November we get this wrapped up and at that point we can uh, be yeah. looking forward to, to doing what we have to do uh, in-house. Is, um, Mr. Chair, is, uh, is there been any coordinated effort with the House at all? Did we talk to them? Uh, we have. We have uh, sent a few emails back and forth. Uh, it, it, uh, I know they've been having some hearings and things going on over there, and then I know the judicial branch has begun some of their hearings sure. as well. Of course, we have not had anything to do with the judicial right. side of things, right. but trying to uh, trying to connect with us, with Representative Murphy on, on what she's planning on doing over there as well. So Thank you. And lastly, uh, it's my understanding that there has been um, testimony and stuff that has been sent by stakeholders, not necessarily germane to these hearings, but in general. Sure. Is that something that can be made available to the committee? Is it available and I'm missing it? If it is, that's cool. But I, I, I get some, I'm getting some texts from folks who said they've sent stuff into you guys and I haven't, I haven't seen it. That doesn't mean you haven't made it available. I'm just wondering where it's at and if we can start getting access to some of that as well. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Carlson, do you wanna speak to this? <clears throat> I personally haven't seen very much of that, but if there was normally what hold hearings and post things that people push forward the hearings as far as so if they've submitted it you know for the hearings we've posted it right um, about but specifically like written testimony just given to the committee to consider as it's going through the process if we received anything like that from anybody if we have I just want to make sure it gets sent to that them. we've had I believe we've posted okay and if I've missed some of that and show me please have them uh, absolutely have, please yeah. send them to yeah. me because I we, we are trying uh, we have received some uh, form letters that are identical, that are pictures that, yeah. that we put in the packets, but I didn't post all 400 of them in the packets. Fair enough, yeah, that's cool. I appreciate you not. <laughs> all right, thanks. All right. Any further comments from members? Okay. Mr. Chair. If somebody else, Senator Murphy. Senator Murphy. Thanks, Senator Kiffmeyer. Um, Mr. Chair, I am grateful that there will be a hearing in St. Paul, and I just want you <coughs> and the committee staff to know that I am ready to help you prepare for that hearing whenever it happens. Wonderful, thank you very much, appreciate that. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So when I heard some of the testimony today, it made me realize that some years ago, um, when I was working, uh, being an election judge, we had a precinct in Sherburne County that had uh, two voters. And so when they voted, their privacy was pretty much mute because uh, there were just two people in that particular precinct. Mm -hmm. And so later on, I was able to help get a, a law such that um, any, any uh, precinct uh, with less than 50 voters, um, the clerk of that city, town, whatever it is that they all work together and request that that particular precinct be folded into a neighboring house district. Mm 
and also then a neighboring Senate district, they, they go together. And I think maybe sometimes people have forgotten that that even exists. And, uh, and it's really important that it protects the privacy of the voters and enables them to do that uh, but especially less than 50 voters, um, generally, most anybody, uh, actually 50 population, most anybody can kind of figure it out. And so I just thought I'd take this opportunity to let people know that that is current law and anybody statewide um, is able to do that. I'm sensitive, especially to growing areas where you have sometimes new precincts and a variety of things happening, uh, that, that right after redistricting, that can be an important tool to help protect uh, the right of the privacy of the voters. So I thought well, this was a good place to just mention that. And um, I just want to say that I appreciate being here in Lakeville, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, Senator Duckworth because he's a way serving us, our country, our state of Minnesota. I just wanted to be sure that he was recognized as being a good senator in, in several ways. Um, appreciate that and to just give him credit for that, and I know otherwise he would be here today. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great point, Senator Kipmeyer. Thank you for, for doing that. I know we, he's in our thoughts and prayers right now as he's mm -hmm. overseas, so appreciate that. Without uh, any further uh, questions or comments, um, we will just, we'll post when the next meeting comes up, but look for that with coming, uh, the notice should be coming uh, shortly. Uh, in your inboxes, so appreciate that. With that, the meeting is adjourned.